Hello you guys and welcome to my channel. I'm so excited to have you here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about some Monet drama that has been going down. So you guys are going to be seeing this on Monday and I know on Friday and Saturday, two other creators did post about this on Friday. I know Isabella Lanter posted and I believe Cece posted her video on Saturday. If you guys have heard about it with watching Cece and Isabella's video, apparently W Fab, if you guys have heard of them, they are a team, a very top team in Monate. So essentially a top rep had started that team and her downline and all of those people are essentially in the W Fab team. They have Instagram Instagram pages about it and all of the top leaders have in their Instagram bio that they're like W Fab founders and all of that stuff. So it's essentially a team. They came up with a team name called W Fab. So W Fab stands for work from anywhere boss babe. So a lot of these people are actually in Canada and that's kind of like the starters or the founders of this team and where they are from. So what kind of kicked this off was there is an individual who I believe is still in Monate. So I'm going to keep her anonymous because you guys know I keep everyone anonymous on my channel, but I'm keeping her anonymous specifically because she did speak out about Monet. And what she did was she shared a bunch of Instagram stories, literally seven minutes long, so I screen recorded it, a seven minute long Instagram stories, essentially showing and exposing WFAB, their group, their team page, their group chats, and kind of exposing things that are happening behind the scenes because she was once in that group. And I believe she's still in Monet, but when she exposed that, it brought up a lot of different things. It brought up number one, how she shitty these reps treat people in the MLM. But two, apparently, and this is all allegedly, some of the WFAB founders and individuals are going to be moving over to another MLM called iGenius, which has a lot of issues in general, if you guys do research on that company, but that's not what this video is about. I believe someone else is going to be doing a video on that. Here, we're just going to be talking about the other stuff. But keep in mind, that's actually happening or allegedly happening in the background that people are trying to move to this other MLM. So I found that really really interesting. So I want to go through all of her video or all of her stories that she posted. That's going to be the first thing that we look at. So there are things that I'm going to have to read like screenshots, but then there are also voice messages that this person has posted from the top people in WFAB. And it is insane the kind of stuff that is going on in this MLM and with this team. So let's look at it. So the first story says I've been getting, so again, I'm going to keep this person anonymous, but it says I've been getting so many DMs about this. So out of respect for everyone to know the truth, I'm going to address it on my story one time. I don't fuck with WFAB anymore because of the way Jasmine and how some of the others want to move. Then she said, first, I got voted off WUWW by eight leaders in the leadership chat since all the, of the other 30 leaders got kicked out of that chat last minute with a two-day notice that if we don't re-rank to MMB, they're getting kicked out. Okay, cool. You want to give my WUWW day away to someone else? No problem. Whatever you say. Then three days later, all of a sudden, I find myself kicked out of all the WFAB chats, the leader chats, the main WFABB chat, and our Zoom link chat. When I confronted Jasmine as to why she kicked me out of the WFAB chats, she states, so this person is saying that essentially they got kicked out of all of these groups because they weren't hitting a certain rank that all of the uplines wanted them to hit, and they weren't doing exactly what the uplines wanted them to do. On Monday, November 8th, this individual messaged Jay, I'm going to call this person J. Yes, I told you I was 100% with this business when we had our phone call. And I told you I'm willing to work on getting better at my leadership. But then right after telling you that you kicked me out of the WUWW day. I don't know what that is, but it essentially seems like it's an important day where leaders kind of like talk or whatever, which demotivated me so much and confused me that you think you can take away from me the business that I built just because in recent times I haven't been showing up as much. I opened up to D personally as one of my close friends on how I'm feeling after you did that to me. And now you're using my private conversation I had with her as a friend against me. When also I never once told D that I'm not doing this business anymore. Like I've said before, I would have loved to share my WUWW day with S. She's amazing. It's the way you handled the situation that threw me off and opened my eyes. Just because I don't always want to run things or move the way you want to doesn't mean I have an ego. I am a lot different than you. So I'm just standing my ground and staying true to myself 
yourself. Like we always say, you don't have to, and then the next slide says, you don't have to be like this or that person. You can find your own way to do this business by being you. But for you to kick me out of the leader chat with all my people, last time I checked, I have 1,100 market partners in my organization that I am building with is insane to me. I don't know why you would ever feel like it's okay to do that. You wanna kick me off, WWW, okay, no problem. S has been putting in work, the majority voted, and I wish her all the best. But kicking me out of the chats, why would you do that? So as we can see, this person is feeling some type of way. She's like, okay, well, you're on social media, always telling people they could do this business how they want to. And you guys know it's not a real business, but that's what they call it. People can do this business how they want to, but then you're gonna kick me out of chats. You're gonna talk to other people about me. Just because I was venting to my friend about the you know business, you're gonna use that against me. And to me, I feel like you should be able to vent to whoever you want. There are some things that you're gonna vent to your friends about that don't really matter. You know, you're gonna vent to your friends about how shitty of a day you had at work. And that shouldn't mean that your coworker or your boss treats you any differently because that's fucking weird. So these are the voice memos she received from Jay is what I will call her, which is the top leader in this whole WFAB thing. And in regards to you getting taken out of the group chats, it's the reason for that is because you are so hot and cold. You are hot and cold, okay? You're telling me you're all in and then you go and you are telling Daniela, oh, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. First of all, you do know that's your downline, right? So again, leadership thrown out the window, okay? Um, and then, you know, you're telling her you don't know and this and this and that. And then people are showing me that you're doing crypto now or whatever. I don't even know what you're doing. And so it's very on and off. Like, I don't know where your head's at. And instead of talking to me and communicating with me and being honest with how you feel, you go and you tell your downline instead, right? So you know what happens. Like, it when people are hot and cold, they get... And that's exactly what happened. And and this is, again, so that you can be aware, I'm having a business conversation with you. This has nothing to do with our friendship. Okay? <laughs> nothing. And I see you posting subliminals about this and that. And that. Like, I know you're in your feelings. Trust me. I know it, it's not easy to take this on, but I but you you fail to be, be aware of yourself and the things that you have done like you can you honestly tell me that you have been putting in massive work just like how sabrina was doing it has nothing to do with you being here at the beginning you are not taking responsibility what you're doing is you are acting on your rights like i have a right to be here because I did it with, at the beginning with Jasmine. You don't get recognized for what you did two years ago, babe. You get recognized what you do today and every single day. And that's just how this business works. That is, oh my God, that is so condescending and disgusting that by the looks of it, this person has a thousand people in her downline. She seems to be at the very top, which... I have my own set of problems with. I don't agree with MLMs and this person has scammed people and that's my opinion. When you have that many people in your downline, you're at the top of an MLM because of people under you losing money, plain and simple. But this really shows the toxic mentality that goes into how uplines treat people within their organization. When she was saying everything, she was essentially being like, oh, you're hot and cold, you don't work, or oh, what you did two years ago, you're not gonna get awarded for, but this chick is still at the top. So you kicked her out because in the moment she's not doing what you want her to do. That is so just, it's hilarious. This is your own business, but at the same time, you have to, you have to do what someone tells you to do, right? That's, that's what it is. It looks like this team is a bunch of people who tell their downlines what to do when they don't do it. They get kicked out of groups and treated like shit. So while the voice memo was going on, the person that posted this was actually like writing things on the screen. So she wrote, exactly all I told D in private was, I don't know if I want to do this business anymore. And with that info, she straight up just kicked me out of the WFAB community chats without confronting me about what she heard. Yes, I started promoting my boyfriend's crypto coins because there was so much money to be made there and I always want to put my people on. Then she also said, D was not just my downline. She was one of my close friends. Sorry, I don't look at people as just my downline, which is true. The person's like, oh, you went to your downline and told her like, who gives a f 
who tells who what. That's just my opinion. Then she says, there ain't no friendship here when there is zero loyalty. Well, damn, if the shoe fits. Yeah, it's not easy to accept that you think you can power trip me by kicking me out of the community's chats based off a private conversation I had with one of my friends. I just got recognized by the vice president of Monate for my production in the last four months. I got third place in all of Canada. I don't give a about reels and posts when numbers speak. My production was top third in all of Canada and you tell me I'm not doing crap. And today I got recognized by the vice president Monet for third place in all of Canada for my numbers. So that's what's interesting is like this person's at the top and is still being treated this way. This person seems as if she's making a lot of money for her uplines and stuff like that. And she is still getting kicked out of crap. So how are people treated when they're struggling in the MLM, which 99% of people struggle. So she responded to her and said, Jay, are you hearing yourself? You're saying you kicked me out of the chats because you think I'm hot and cold based off my private conversation I had with D. Since D told you about our conversation why would you not talk to me first clear things up instead of just automatically kicking me out of the wfab chats so then jay said if you scroll up i did say i was going to message you this week until you cooled down and after that two-hour conversation of trying to get you to open up didn't work i left the ball in your court and told you when you're ready to open up you can message me and instead of doing that you went to your downline to vent like i said you're difficult to communicate with and anything i say or do you take it as an attack instead of self-analyzing this was the exact conversation I was avoiding. I'm not here to argue. I'm here to let you know why this is happening. You can do what you want with that info. Please let me know where your head's at with the business. And if you're still doing it, I'll add you back into the main chat. So now you'll add her back in. Okay. The chick then wrote on the screen, I guess I'm going to call her Kay, the person who's posting all this stuff. She put, what is this? Mean Girls movie part two? What kind of gaslighting shit? My numbers speak. So when someone's speaking of gaslighting, they're essentially talking talking about when someone tries to twist the scenario to fit their own narrative to kind of make you feel crazy like what you're experiencing isn't really happening so that's why this person is feeling like she's being gaslit because she's being told things that just aren't adding up just because she told her downline or someone in her downline that is her friend something doesn't mean she should be kicked out and told she's hot and cold and she can't have combos and kind of being blamed for essentially nothing then Kay said she admitted to me that she kicked me out because of my private conversation that she found out about and used that against me great leader Leadership. So then Kay responds to Jay and says, yes, I heard from Danielle and Daniela that you already signed up to iGenius under Rakan and a bunch of other top leaders did too. It's crazy to me that you are just telling me this now once you and other leaders already signed up, especially since you've been thinking about it since you dropped seven ranks. And the fact that you have been talking about it for a while between other people, but yet you never told the one person that has the second biggest organization in WFAB and the person that has always told you to get into Bitcoin slash crypto, who is supposed to be your best friend. So this is where people have been bringing up the fact that top leaders in WFAB are moving over to iGenius, which is a crypto MLM scheme, whatever. I'm not even going to get into that. I'm just alleging that it's a scheme based off what I've researched. But in general, apparently a bunch of top reps based on what this K individual is saying have moved on to iGenius under whoever, right? So under the Rakan person. And Kay, actually, she always talks about crypto. So now she's mad that she was telling her friend, so the person in her downline, oh, well, I've been like promoting crypto. I'm kind of like eh, with the business right now. I'm not really a fan of it. She gets kicked out of all of these groups and then all the top leaders join iGenius. <laughs> It's, it's really messed up how all of this is happening. So Kay says, now after all of that, after being kicked out of WUWW and kicked out of all the WFAB chats, she messaged me yesterday that she is going to switch the whole WFAB team out of Monet and move them to iGenius. So this is where shit started happening. And we were all sitting there talking about like, what is the point? So, okay, what ends up happening when you move from MLM to MLM, if you're a top leader, normally top leaders will move to another MLM if they are currently struggling in their MLM because they feel like if they can move, they can take all of their kind of downline with them and kind of start with a built-in downline. So what ends up happening is top leaders will go from the MLM they're currently in, they will go over to another one. All of the downlines will end up quitting that MLM and going to the other ones, and it'll help them rank up quickly, get bonuses quickly and all of that. So this chick said that this girl has dropped seven ranks. And since she dropped seven ranks, that's when she wanted to go to iGenius. So this is what I'm talking about when I tell you guys that MLMs are not sustainable. They're not something that is going to keep you going for long. And you're always on this hamster wheel, hamster wheel of recruiting. Can you keep it going? Can you keep your 
your rank? Can you keep all of that going? You know what I mean? Most of the time, people cannot keep it going because in MLMs, especially Monet, if you look at their comp plan in order to rank up, in order to get access to more bonuses and stuff like that, you have to recruit people. So if your recruits start canceling their accounts, if they don't stay active, all of that stuff, you end up dropping rank, losing bonuses, losing money, and losing everything that you just built. So that's why I tell you guys that MLMs are not sustainable. Monate's 2020 income disclosure statement shows us that the average market partner in 2020 earned $876 in a year. But if you actually look at the numbers, 92% of reps are in the first rank with making an average of $161 a year, 3.78% make an average of $1,988 a year, the top 1.5, or the next rank is 1.59, and the average for those 1.59% of people, they make an average of $4,000 a year, and then every rank from market builder all the way to the top rank has like 0.50% of people, 0.2, 0.08, 0.03. So as we can see, there are like slim to none odds, in my opinion, to get to the top. And these numbers pretty much talk about that. They show that the top rank only has 0.01%. They show the second to top rank only has 0.02% of people in it. So all of these top ranks, you can see that your odds are like a 0.01% chance of getting to the number one rank or 0.02 for the top two ranks. The top three ranks is 0.01. Fourth to the top is 0.08. Like the numbers are so low, but if you cannot maintain a downline, a downline that's staying active and a downline that is actively trying to sign people up, buy products, recruit, and all of that, you will lose your spot in the ranks. Because if we go to, when we go to the comp plan, we can see here at the top that there are certain qualifications in order to maintain your rank. There are what's called personal volume, which is the amount of product you need to buy or sell a month. You have active lines, so essentially people in your downline. You have group volume, so the amount of volume you and your team are producing. And then you have downline volume, all of that stuff. So as you can see, the higher up you get on this rank structure, I'll have it like lined up for you guys. Every time you move up to a new rank, you need more of something. You need more PV, you need more active lines, you need more group volume. And then you get to the top of the MLM where you need like 60,000 group volume points and downline points and all of this stuff that is 99% of the time not attainable for most people, which is why you see this person dropped seven ranks or whatever, because they probably cannot handle what it is that they need to keep. So that's like the background story on this person allegedly saying that this J chick, this top chick drops seven ranks. That's a lot of ranks. If we can just assume she was at the number one rank, if she drops seven ranks, she would be at market builder, which only 0.50% of people get into that rank, making an average of $6,000 a year. So unfortunately, when you drop ranks that much, you are going to watch your income freaking plummet, which is probably why uh, this K chick is alleging that this individual and other W fab people, the top reps of Monet, are moving to another MLM. The whole organization, the whole team, the Instagram chats, or not Instagram chats, but Instagram pages are all gonna move over to iGenius. That's the background on that, and that is essentially how we got that information. Then Kay said, I genius used to be called Kuvera, which used to be called Wealth Generations. Due to scamming people of their hard earned money, they had to change their name legally three times. They're a Forex slash crypto MLM company. So it says they don't know shit about crypto. They make money recruiting people to sign up and pay monthly fees of $300 plus. This is the first network marketing co company that Jay started with five years ago. The same company that scammed her and robbed her whole team. The same company that she would always talk shit about throughout the whole time she was working in Monet. And the chick circled that. So when I did look up iGenius, again, this is all allegedly and what I'm reading. When I did look it up, I did find a site that said that iGenius is a fraud MLM circulization scheme and they're not very transparent about things. Again, that's all allegedly. I've not done a deep dive on this. We will see what this individual said in a voice memo back. Because why are you... I hope you're doing amazing. I'm sending out this voice message to you just to kind of get you in on what's been happening with WFAB, behind the scenes, what's going on and stuff. Um, and it's only fair for me to message you directly and let you know just because it's been a huge, you've been a huge part of WFAB. Um, I mean, you did, you were the, the second person that started with it with me. So I know that you deserve to know everything and be in on this. Um, if anything, I do want you to be a part of this. I would love for you to be a part of this. I know Daniela A told you um, briefly of what we, where we are headed. Um, we are going to 
I Genius. We are gonna start in a bit, like in a couple of days, just kind of launching everything. Um, I wanted to let you know to get you in on it. Now, I totally respect if you're not interested. I know you work with Nino, and I know the things that have been, you know, going on with uh the stuff with nino and rakan and stuff so but i wanted to just lay that out for you and just let you know that if you were to be interested i do have something for you but again like and i i'm doing that because i know that you were you were a part of building up w fab and i would never want you to feel like you got dumped off and like nothing like you know and we didn't think about you because you were in the plans you were in the 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 works of this all and um i know we haven't really spoken we're not really on good terms um speaking wise um but i just want to let you know that i care for you and i i obviously want you included in this so, um but yeah i totally understand if you don't want to do it i respect that but i just want you to know that there is always uh, a place for you here okay hopefully you're doing great and i uh, hope to hear from you soon okay so she messaged her that after two days of k ignoring her right so the person who's posting this on instagram stories was ignoring this j chick like girl you just took me out of all these groups you're telling me i'm hot and cold like so let's read what she was saying on the screen while the voicemail was going on so k said i ignored her last message obviously because she is a gaslighting power tripping b two weeks later she sent me a voice note yesterday wow this is your form of showing respect to tell me you are moving the team to a whole new network marketing company once you already signed up and your other leaders already signed up low-key too she then said she already signed up to iGenius and convinced whoever she could to sign up too has all of them placed strategically under herself so you want to put me on the bottom of the pyramid lol my man so Kay's boyfriend it says my man has beef with them because he was or he scammed me out of five thousand dollars in this mlm service they don't make money in crypto in their MLM company. They make money straight up recruiting people. I'm definitely not interested in scamming people in iGenius fake crypto services. Now all of those girls are going to become crypto experts. Watch out. And then she also said, but this is exactly what you did, Jay. You kicked me out of everything, had your hidden agenda between a select few, and you want to tell the person that created WFAB with you once you and others are already signed up. Get out of here. Stop trying to make yourself sound like a nice girl. And then she said, nah, I'm good. Go away. So the next story says, so in her previous voice note, we were friends and she cares about me, but now she's getting real and saying we haven't been friends. Pick a side. So then Jay essentially responded and said, please don't take this as a personal attack this is me being very real with you let's be real we haven't been acting like best friends it's been on and off friendships this whole year you're the only one who i feel you're not being honest with me i told you so many times to open up and all you say is nothing wrong it, everything's okay the final decision was really made recently and we were not on speaking terms before that it was just a thought in my head i told the girls very briefly and for us to all or for us to go all out in the next 60 to 90 days to see if anything changes i did didn't feel the need to let you know because even during the Dominican we were distant this is not something you just tell anyone and the reason why they briefly knew what I was thinking was because all three of them felt like something was up with me and I couldn't hide it much longer also you guys have an issue with the crypto guy that gave me even more of a reason not to tell you anyways I'm not here to argue I have a lot on my plate I just wanted to let you know what my plans were and where we were headed he said so don't take this personally but I've seen firsthand how you move and how you move with your people and your morals and loyalty just doesn't match with mine hence why i have been distancing you claim to have best friends but they're only your best friends for as long as they produce in your business and are under your influence i've seen it firsthand multiple times to have a conversation with someone as to how to be a loyal person is not a conversation i'll have with anyone it's either you got it or you don't unfortunate how things played out but i'm not going to repaint someone after true colors have been shown i just can't afford to have that energy around me anyways i'm not here to argue with you either because clearly we don't see eye to eye if you want to take wfab back into the first network marketing company that robbed you five years ago and scammed your whole team good luck with that i hope one day you wake up and realize who was really there for you the chick responded and said no problem so k kind of ends this with saying 
In conclusion, WFAB and Monet is not a thing anymore. They are moving WFAB into iGenius. All of these girls are now going to become crypto experts with a scam company. Where there is no loyalty or trust or respect, there is nothing. I'm out. Good luck to everyone. Please be careful who you give your money to. And then she pretty much does another story. I'm not going to read that one, but it says that, hey, pretty much watch out because if she's doing this to me, who was once her best friend that started WFAB with her, she'll do it to you. And then she says, I'm done. Truth is out. Y'all can do what you want with that information. I'm always the Zen one, like everyone says. Nobody can get a reaction from me, but disrespect and disloyalty is not something I'll stay quiet about. Someone had to speak up. Loyalty is black and white. There's no gray area when it comes to loyalty, and I know only a few will understand that. If you're in WFAB, I'm saying this out of respect for you guys because I found out. The big WFAB call that's happening tomorrow, which is happening on Friday, like Friday before i making this video is happening tomorrow is letting you guys know that w5 is no longer doing monet and they want you to pay and sign up into the scam company called igenius so she ended her stories with saying that's that or that's the t friends so you all know the truth now where there is no loyalty there is no respect and when there is no respect there is nothing that was a lot that was a lot of names but as you can see jay is the person that kicked k out of this group there's this x person that has scammed k before or in iGenius so she has a little bit of experience with that and it's why she left now with all of this being said I personally still do not agree with any multiple marketing company Monet included if this person is still Monet I do not support that and I do not support what it is that she is doing but I am happy that she brought this to light because the difference between what's going on behind the scenes with these top leaders makes me question a lot of things it makes me question are they really seeing the success they talk about when this J chick drop seven ranks and is moving to another MLM. Does this show that your MLM has any sustainability? No, it does not. It does the complete opposite for you and proves every point that I and other people have been making for a really long time about how MLMs are not sustainable and essentially you're on a hamster wheel that will never end. With that being said, it also shows the true difference of how these people talk about WFAB and Monet on social media versus how they talk to these reps behind the scenes. So in my opinion, I, I was watching all of this happen. So I looked into all of these people and I was like, okay, what is it that they post? All of them have Instagram highlights that are called like WFAB or whatever. And it's all about supporting and shouting people out, making them feel loved. A lot of love bombing, toxic positivity, people crying because they made a rank and all this stuff and people celebrating them. So when you go on this person's social media and you're an outsider and you see this and you see that, oh my gosh, they all look like they're uplifting each other, all of these these women are being successful in this business. They're making money. They're going on trips because they post that in their highlights and on their page. But then we see this behind the scenes that there's no support. There is no true support in MLMs. And I'm not saying every like upline is like this because they're not. They're really great individuals that get roped into MLMs and unfortunately end up scamming people unknowingly. And that is a thing. But there are a lot of the times where the people at the tippy tippy top know exactly what they're doing. And if you do not do exactly what they want, if you do not make them money, if you do not do certain things, you'll get kicked out of groups. They'll talk shit about you. They will kick you out of things that you started. They will start joining other MLMs. They will do all of these other things behind the scenes that they will never, ever, ever tell on public social media. So that's why I'm happy this person said something. I just wanted to show you guys the difference of what happens when you watch MLM reps on social media to what is actually happening behind the scenes. So in part two, I am going to make a part two of this because this video is getting a little bit long and all of that. So I'm going to make a part two that is going to be going up on Wednesday. It's going to be my MLM fails for the day or my fails. And we're going to go look at all of these individuals' social media highlights. So all of these people that are in WFAB, and trust me, it is like a, a lot of highlights, like 10 minutes worth each person of highlights, which is why I don't want to add it to this video. We are going to look at their highlights. We're going to see how do they treat their reps and present that to social media versus how do they do it behind the scenes. We just seen what they did. In my opinion, it showed no support. It showed how MLMs truly are. In part two, again, we're going to look at essentially all the social media highlights, everything that these people post on social media and how that differs from what we just seen. So if you want to check that out, make sure to come back on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time. And you guys, 
guys can check all of that out and we could go through it all together. So don't forget to leave a like and a comment. I would like to have a full on conversation about this. If you have had this kind of experience in an MLM where behind the scenes you have experienced something completely different than what's shown on social media, I would just love to have a conversation about that below, depending on what MLM you were in and your experience. And then don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below. Again, I will be linking Cece and Isabella's videos too. And I will see you guys on Wednesday for part two, looking at how things are shown on social media versus what's happening behind the scenes. <laughs>